Hello, microbiology students. Welcome to our home stretch of the semester. You have two assignments that are due on finals week. When you look at the syllabus, you will see that we have one case study worth 50 points and an accompanying PowerPoint for 30 points. So let's take a moment to look at those. So now when you go under modules and you scroll down to finals week, you will see the following lists. While you are free to find your own articles and references, I have provided a helpful link that has a collection of microbiology clinical case studies that you are free to use. So if you click on the link provided, um, you actually see some really good references here. So for example, um, maybe you wanted to write a paper on uh, rat bite fever. So you can just click on this and this is going to download the article for you. And that can be used as your primary article. So going back now to modules, let's get more information on how you should approach the paper and the PowerPoint. So when you click on the uh, clinical case study, for example, you will see that I have added some guidance on your papers here. For the essay, there are actually two different approaches that you can use. One is to find a clinical case study paper that follows the illness of one specific person. Now you need three references anyway, so it's fine to supplement any missing or incomplete information from another source. I've also included a list of items that you should look for if you're going to do the clinical case study. That's my dog barking in the background. When choosing your paper, you want to look for the following items. You'll be expected to introduce the patient, maybe give a familial history, a health history, um, name, age, vital statistics, that sort of thing. Talk about the symptoms of the patient. What brought the patient to the doctor or the hospital? What medical examinations or test results are involved in the diagnosis of that particular patient? And then, of course, you'll need to describe how the disease affects the body, going into quite a bit of scientific detail. Lastly, you'll need to talk about what the prognosis of the patient was. Is there a treatment? Is this a lifelong thing? Are there any long-term effects? How long does the disease last? The second approach, if you're not able to find a good clinical study that really just hones in on the case of one particular person, there is another approach you can go. Or maybe you're interested in a particular disease that maybe you or a family member or just something that you're interested in researching. In this case, you could pick any disease, even if it's not one discussed in the course. Feel free to email me if you think that it's something that, um, that I might not think is valid for some reason. I'm happy to pre-approve those for you. So the list is really the same, but just changes slightly when doing this approach. For example, things you want to look for are demographics of the disease instead of personal information. The demographics are going to be what is the typical lifestyle, age range, genetic makeup, or geographical locations that make a certain population at a higher risk of acquiring the disease. Um, you should talk about the symptoms of the disease. How is the diagnosis? made, what would entail a medical examination, what would test results be, of course describing in detail how the disease affects the body using science, and then what is the typical prognosis of somebody receiving this diagnosis? Is there a treatment? How long does the disease last? And are there any long-term effects? Some suggestions for completing the assignment. I suggest first, start by picking your paper or article that contains most of the information needed. You can pick one of the articles that I have provided for you, or you can find one on your own. Once you've found that main article that you think has the bulk of the information that you will need to do your assignment, then you can move on to step two. I suggest at this point, open the Word template and save a copy with your title. That way, the Word template I have provided for you is already set up with the proper margins, font, and font size. Um, but I suggest do a save as. That way you also have the original template right there to go off of so that you can see what it is you should be talking about in each section of the paper. You will probably need to get information from other resources for any information that might be weak, missing, or incomplete in your main article that you have chosen. 
For example, test results usually need to be researched further, um, along with more information on how the disease affects the body. You need a minimum of three references anyways, so should not be a problem there. Once you have finished writing your essay, then I suggest opening the PowerPoint template and then add the relevant information from your essay to the PowerPoint document. Some graphs and pictures are highly recommended for your PowerPoint presentation. You can use graphs and pictures from resources that were not mentioned in your essay, that is fine. Just make sure to reference those separately in your PowerPoint. So I've got links to both of the templates here. So you also have links to them here. So essay template and PowerPoint template. So let's just quickly look at those so that you have an idea of what it is you are looking at. You can download the template by clicking here on this link. Um, I'll just leave it up on the screen for now. So for the introduction, um, I suggest using the template. If you don't use the template, then please use this as a guide. You may use a 12 point font of New Times Roman or Calibri. Paragraphs should be double spaced and free of spelling and grammatical errors. You should use one inch margins and text should be no less than three full pages of text. Your essay should be double spaced and should include a running header that includes the title of your paper along with your name. And please do add page numbers as well. The introduction should be an overview of the disease. How prevalent is the disease? What are the general symptoms of the disease? who is mostly affected by this particular disease. Save fine details for the case study portion of your essay. Uh, in the case study portion, I suggest starting with patient information or if you've taken the more approach, demographics. So in this portion of your essay, you should introduce the patient along with personal information, including age, health, family history, name, etc. Describe the symptoms the patient is experiencing, what brought the patient to the doctor. If you chose the more broad approach, you can use information on the demographics of the disease here. For example, are there people with a specific age range, geographical area, or a certain genetic makeup or lifestyle that might make them more prone to getting uh, this particular disease? And then of course, go into scientific detail on how the disease affects the body. Uh, symptoms uh, diagnosis for this portion of the paper go into any detail about lab testing or certain signs that a physician would look for to make a diagnosis of the disease. The prognosis for this portion of your paper go into detail on any long-term effects. Is the disease curable? Is it treatable? What is the treatment? And what steps should the patient do in order to feel better? And then the conclusion should just basically wrap up the key points of your paper. Uh, no new details need to be presented in your conclusion, just simply restate the topic and key points in a short summary. And then finally, list your three references, uh, more is fine, MLA or APA format is fine, online references are also totally fine. Once you've completed your essay, then open the clinical case study PowerPoint template. And at this point, it should be pretty easy. So um, you can just ignore this first slide. That's just so you know what it is you are looking at. And again, I suggest opening this up and doing a save as and just filling this out since it's already in the format that is recommended. So on your first slide, you should put title, your name, class information, um, then you're going to introduce the patient and we're going to do the same thing. If you don't have a specific patient, if you're doing the more broad approach, talk about the demographics. Does the disease affect a certain age range, uh, people in a certain geographical location, people with a certain lifestyle or genetic makeup or ethnicity, etc. Also include the symptoms. Now you might need more than one slide to talk about the personal information or demographics and symptoms and that sort of thing, which is totally fine. Uh, medical exam, test results, uh, describe what tests need to be done or were done or should be done what's considered a normal result versus an abnormal result, how are those tests performed, etc. Then give the results of the tests, um, describe any physiological processes that may have caused the test or exam to be abnormal, uh, diagnosis, what was the diagnosis of the patient, 
If you're doing the more broad approach, uh, talk about how the diagnosis is made, uh, list the symptoms of the disorder diagnosed. Um, here you can talk about the typical symptoms of a person suffering from the disease or hone in on your particular patient. What is the treatment? Are there other treatments available for the disorder diagnosed? Prognosis, what is the long-term effect, if any, of receiving this diagnosis? What is the treatment? And then your summary that just kind of summarizes your case study. And then of course, re-references. You guys have all done such a great job so far and I miss seeing your faces. Hopefully I'll get to see you guys in person again very soon. I hope everybody is healthy and happy and I wish you guys all great success, not only in this class, but in life. And I wish you all a very happy winter break and happy holidays. Thank you and good luck.